Citigroup CEO Jane Frazier, the host of the meeting today, joins me. Thank you for having us here and welcome. It's wonderful to have you back for the second time, Sarah. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for doing this a few days after the election because we've got a lot to talk about now. I, I am curious because financials have been some of the biggest winners post-Trump re-election. Your own stock up 7% this week. Does that make sense? It was a good week in the markets um, and uh, it's on the back of a quick a clear and a decisive result, which I think was a, really helped drive what was uh, an anticipation of a pro-growth agenda. And we saw that clearly as beneficiaries in the bank sector. We saw it with small and medium-sized companies as well, and obviously um, and some of the tech stocks that are here today. Does it change the outlook for your business? Uh, we're expecting uh, some lighter regulation. Uh, we'd already been having some pretty constructive discussions with Chair Powell, and we're heading, I think, in a better place with Basel III. That will help access to credit. Uh, that will benefit the consumer. That will benefit uh, co smaller and larger companies uh, in their access and cost of funding. So we're, we're expecting broadly this to be pro-growth and beneficial. I am curious what happens to Basel III because the original proposal was the 19 percent increase in capital and then they came back with a 9 percent increase in capital but that didn't pass so it, what is your expectation at this point that it gets delayed further? Could it go away? I, I think there are there are a variety of different scenarios that could play out here. Um, we'll, we will have to wait and see what happens, uh, but our expectation will be that it will be the lighter version. I think any any bank CEO will tell you we feel very well capitalized indeed. The, the lighter version of the increase, the nine uh, percent increase. Uh, I would expect a lighter version of oh, the Basel III proposal. We would we would we would hope so. Yes. What about the CFPB? I, I imagine you're looking forward to change there. And I wonder if you think it's realistic to expect, I don't know, rollback of, for instance, the late fees uh, rules and how beneficial that would be for you. Oh, as always, personnel will drive policy, uh, as we've been talking about this morning. And so we'll see who are the, uh, the individuals that are chosen, what will their policy agenda be. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but a, a lighter environment on that front, and I hope that will help drive competitiveness. Um, uh, we feel the U.S. financial system it's the best in the world, uh, and we want to make sure that it continues to be competitive and, and a global strength for the for the America. Speaking of the best in the world, there is this question mark of tariffs. I mean, President Trump all, throughout the campaign has been pretty clear and consistent that they will increase, and mm. you are the most global bank. So I'm wondering how you expect that to influence the global economy and the U.S. economy. Uh, what, we t what we've often found is that what's said and then what actually gets happens tends to be more of a negotiating ploy um, to get certain expectations too high and then we'll see what, uh, what actually passes. These things take time. Tariffs, tax policy, they don't tend to happen overnight. Uh, this is going to take a bit of time to play out. There'll be some winners and losers. At the end of the day, the, the goal there is to drive more activity into the U.S. So I think for the U.S., broadly, there will be, it will be beneficial, but we have to wait and see what the actions are. On our panel last week in Riyadh, you were fairly optimistic and positive on the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. Does your outlook now improve further? Has it changed? The U.S. The US economy is resilient. I mean, it continues to surprise to the upside when we look at the third quarter. And it's a combination of push and pull factors here. And I think some of the pull factors will just be amplified. On the push side, Europe is not that competitive. We're seeing it really struggling to get out of stagnancy. Um, at tough labor markets, I, the draggy report and diagnostic was right. And there's not as much confidence that they'll be able to actually execute against it. Um, we're seeing still continued questions on the stimulus being enough in China to drive growth. So a lot of roads lead back to the states in investments. And then you never bet against the American entrepreneur, alive and well as we see them here today. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just this sector. It's also in healthcare. It's in energy. It's in all the different industries with tech adjacencies. Uh, carrots matter. And the U.S. has also had a number of incentives that have been pulling investment in. So broadly, I feel pretty good about the U.S. economy and the prospects ahead for continued investment.